before the 2020 pandemic it was possible for virtually anyone to go into broiler farming and even though they just do it anyhow they still get some profit at the end of the day but right now wow it's a lot of trouble waiting for you if you just go into the business and you do it anyhow so that's why i've been making series of videos to educate broiler farmers on how to maximize profit and one of these ways is choosing the right breed okay so in today's video you're going to be seeing what you have not seen before on my channel yes today i'm going to be taking you on a journey from zero to the kind of results that i get yes i'm going to be showing you step after step how i get the kind of results that i get with my broilers starting from choosing the right breed the feed the medication the vaccination the management everything i'm going to be showing you step by step and you are going to enjoy it and beyond this because i really want you to succeed as your poultry success partner i'm also going to be showing you very soon the rearing of broilers i'm going to take like 100 beds as an experiment to show you guys day after day how you can raise broilers from day one to maturity i'm going to show you it's going to be live before you i'll make sure i shoot videos uh with the birds every day every day so the birds will be coming in anytime from now and i'm going to show you so if you don't want to miss that you want to go right there and hit the subscribe button right away you should also try to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new uploads so let's quickly dive into what we have today yes i want to show you how i get the kind of results that i get with brothers yes okay so i have a case study that i'll be showing you i'm going to be showing you the data i'm going to be showing you the facts and figures so you don't think i'm just saying anything you know i'm not just blabbing i'm going to be showing you real facts so there is uh, a case study i'm going to be working on i'm going to be showing you guys for that case study before I even before I went on that project before I reached the, the beds I wrote a blog post on choosing the best broiler breed and in that post I mentioned that the core 500 stand out as my favorite breed for um, uh, as my favorite breed of broilers but then there's a clause to that that's definitely not for the six weeks business whenever i want to go into the six weeks business i choose the rush 308 because those ones give the best return on investment in the space of six weeks so that is the reason why i decided to go with the rust 308 from agritech during this particular case study so i decided to choose the rust 308 even i had to step out of the way step out of my favorite breed i didn't have to go with the cop 500 because i needed something more i needed something very quickly you know i needed results in just five five weeks i needed results so i knew cob would not deliver as much result as i needed and that's for the breed so you need to know exactly what breed will deliver at every point in time i keep saying this nobody should call me and say okay uh what's the best breed no there's no best breed out there there's no best breed you just need the right breed for whatever results you want yes you need the right breed i'm not going to stop saying it you just need the right breed for you and i made a video on that i'm going to leave the link right here i'm also going to leave the link in the description down below so you want to go there and check you need to go with the right breed for the kind of um result that you need to get that's for the breed so also another thing that is very very crucial very very important is the kind of feed that you give to the birds quality feeds give you quality results as a matter of fact the kind of result i even got surpasses the projections that was made by the feed production company yes the company told me okay we're going to get this weight uh after using this quantity of feed and in within this particular time but i tell you i actually got an exemplary result because of management which is the next thing that i would want you to know management there was a video i think i talked about the comfort zone ex um, experience creating that comfort zone experience for your beds to some it might sound like oh this guy is just speaking english comfort zone experience but that is 
what you need to get the best result possible the best result possible because not everybody is doing that on their farm that's one our environment in nigeria naturally takes away the comfort zone from the birds yes so we need to consciously provide that comfort zone experience for the birds if you don't do that for your broiler birds you'll be getting results but not the best results that you can get and like i told you in the introduction broiler farming of this day is beyond what we do in the past you don't just make profit in broiler farming today if you don't do it well you don't get anything in fact you, you can lose everything if you don't do it well so i've known clients that lose hundreds of birds even thousands of birds imagine losing 1000 chicken that's a lot of loss that's a lot of loss so you want to make sure that you provide that comfort zone experience if you want to see the video on that comfort zone experience you will find the link right here and in the description below make sure you watch this video to the very end before you start going out to check out those videos because you don't want to miss out on anything okay as you can see i have my farm record book with me and um that will help me to to give you just exactly what uh, we went through during that particular um, project. So for the feed, you need to go for quality feed. High quality feed will deliver the kind of result that you can get. And if you have been wondering what is the feeding pattern like, uh, you want to feed these beds 24 hours, at least for the first few weeks. 24 hours you can't get the kind of results that i talk about i mean 2.4 2.5 kg in 35 days in five weeks you can't get it if you don't feed them throughout the day but then you don't have to do this up to five weeks you can do that up to three weeks plus so that was what we did here for over three weeks they were fed day and night day and night. that is you have to put on the light for them in the night so that they can see and then eat so you want to make sure that you do this and as you do this as they get to three weeks plus you will see that the weight of the beds uh, may be causing problems okay before that you have to ensure that you supplement calcium yes i'm going to show you the medication chart to help you out you have to supplement calcium from anytime from 10 days or so you have to start to supplement calcium you don't wait until the bears are four weeks and they are starting to have leg problems before you supplement calcium these broilers you are feeding them to really attain to attain a very high weight within a short period of time so you need to also give them the physical support in terms of calcium for the legs for the bones so that it can carry their weight don't forget at two weeks you'll be amazed at the kind of result that you get at two weeks here yeah, i think i recorded 551 point nine three grams almost 600 grams at two weeks so you can see that weight is already big so half is more than half a kilo in just two weeks so that weight is too much for their legs to carry without you helping them out by strengthening their bones so don't forget you have to supplement calcium and also you want to ensure that the ventilation is good yes there has to be cross ventilation you don't raise brothers in a place where oh, you have only one opening and the other part is blocked no 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 you can't get the best results the best result will come when they have good ventilation the air is blowing from this part and it's also coming out from the other part that's very very essential and you have to minimize the heat that gets into the house if you can do this don't forget i was talking about comfort zone if you can do this in fact your co-farmers will be wondering why are you getting this kind of result on your farm because you are just giving them the kind of comfort that they want that they want okay let me add that in preparing your brooding house you want to be careful that you you don't cover everywhere i see some people cover they cover the top of the house they cover every corner of the house the sides the top that it's almost impossible for little air to come in no 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 that's not the right way we are not just trying to concentrate it in the house that's not the only thing we're only trying to give them the level of warmth that they need and at the same time you don't want the it to escape um, in a very short time but then you still want fresh oxygen to come into the house yes you don't want the house to get choked you don't want the humidity of the house to 
get messed up, you know. So you still need a little opening at the top of the house. You need your little opening that is a must. You need it. So I don't really encourage you covering the top of the house with nylon. No. I don't encourage that. So you just cover the sides. Even at the sides, you, you get you leave about say two inches, just a little, just a little gap for air to come in and go out. That exchange of air is really important. As a matter of fact, there are studies that confirm that ventilation, air exchange, the level of oxygen available for the birds affect growth. Yes, but some people don't know that they just want to minimize the amount of heat they will supply. They want to minimize the number of times they will have to refill the gas or the charcoal they will use. So they want to make sure that they block every uh, every escape for the head. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. So you just try to cover all the sides, but then leave a little space at the top, at the edges of the house, so you can have your air exchange there hot air going out, cool air coming in, fresh oxygen supply to the bed. It is very important if you are looking at the overall health of your chickens, of your brother chickens. Some people also make the mistake of putting their water tank, the chicken water tank outside the pen. Yes, if you're going to do that, you have to provide a kind of shade for the water tank. If you don't do that, the water will get hot and throughout the hot period of the day, they are also drinking hot water. In fact, most of them will not want to drink water. So you have to ensure that you either place the water tank inside the pen or you place it outside and then provide a covering. You provide a covering for the water tank. So that's that about that. And one, one more thing, just like I promised you, I'm still going to show you the medication and vaccination chart. One more thing is that don't make the mistake of rushing to vaccinate your birds when you notice the, there's a sign of disease. Maybe you are, you are noticing CRD. Like in this case, I think on day 10, they started to show some signs of CRD, chronic respiratory disease, and they were supposed to take Gumboro, I think, on, the, on that day 10 or 11. So we had to postpone that to day 13. So we quickly attacked the CRD, gave them some medication then. Following that, we gave the Gumboro and then continued with the medication for CRD. It is very important that your birds are healthy enough to undo vaccination. Vaccination is a stress on your birds. Like, an, or I, like I always say, vaccination puts stress on your birds because you are inducing that agent that, that, that can cause the disease but has been weakened. So you are stimulating an immune response in their body. So you need a bird that is very okay, that is healthy to manage a vaccination. So you don't just vaccinate anybody. You don't say, oh, because it's on the, ah, we have to vaccinate today. If you are doing that, you are going to be killing your birds yourself. You are going to be killing your birds yourself. So make sure that beyond the rush for vaccination, your birds are healthy. And that is why you need to start watching a few days before the date of vaccination. You need to start watching and make sure that, okay, these birds are okay. Are these birds okay? If they are not, quickly attack the problem and keep uh, make, sure, make sure that they are healthy to take the vaccination. So on, on at week one, they were rec they were recording average weight of 191.3 grams. That's on the average. We had a few over 200 grams and all that. And on week two, they were having 551.93 grams. That's week two, average weight again. Uh, and the sample size was 100. We had 1,000, about 1,400 beds on ground. But then the sample size was 100. That is big. We picked 100 birds to weigh every week, every week, 100 birds. The sample size is also important when you are choosing or when you are deciding on the average weight. You don't just pick five birds or four birds or nine birds and say you are using that to represent the whole of 1,000 plus. The sample size should be at least 10% or minimum in case of a very large number five percent of the entire flock so the sample size was 100 and we were getting this average weight from that so on uh, week three we had over one kg that is one kg 
and 52.64 grams that's week three and as at week four they were 1000 and at week four they were 1707.24 grams 1707.24 grams and at week five they were 2439.92 grams approximately 2.44 kg that is excellent that is excellent but all that will not come without you paying attention to the little details that matter in the hand the tiny tiny details that many people overlook you know there are people that just have their brother farm and they just go there mm, feed them in the morning and they disappear sometimes they come back late in the evening you don't get the best results that way there has to be somebody on ground who is going around checking to see how healthy the beds are intervening there are occasions where you have maybe each stroke uh each shock there's just this heat flash that comes into the pen and you know the weather is just so hot that you need to rescue some beds that are affected uh even during this ex uh, during this project there are beds that were rescued by dipping them inside water and all that and that is one of the reasons why you will have to stop feeding them 24 hours at about four weeks you may not be able to continue into the fifth week because of the kind of weather we are but during the rainy season good luck you may just leave them for about maybe three hours without food and let them have a, a food for the remaining 21 hours so you can do that during the rainy season but during the hot period in fact when it got to about four weeks we had to stop feeding them during the day they just eat from 6 p.m in the evening to the next morning and at, a, at, at, the, <coughs> and at around 10 11 the feed is already out so they have to fast again because the eat was so much the eat was so much all right so you want to be very flexible you don't just want to do things because it has been written down that you must do this no you want to give the birds what they need part time sometimes you may need help you may need to call some persons and just explain what is going on on your farm to them but other times you should know okay this is what is happening these birds are just dying without any known cause but then it looks like they usually pant more in the afternoon and they are not able to heat they just want water you should know that the heat is much and you try to um help them ease the situation probably you provide some extra form of ventilation or you provide them with a fan or you provide a sprinkler where you maybe you have them in cages you provide a a, fo a forger and um all manner of ways you can be flexible about the rearing also in the feeding once you feed to a point and you see that okay this feed uh is really putting so much pressure on them in the hot afternoon then yeah, you slow it down and like that but even with that with it with this uh slow down we're still able to get this kind of weight 2.44 kg in only 35 days in only 35 days so that is very possible this is not just um somebody talking i believe you have seen the figures before your own very highs and this is something you can do you can replicate it on your farm and you're going to get just that result or even something better who knows yes so thank you very much for watching this is diy hagrick i'm your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner if you are yet to subscribe please go right there and hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you think you like the video and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.